Um, again, the um, Finance Committee and the Select Board are meeting together. Um, I guess we still have a couple of people from Select Board who uh, are yet to show, but we're going to start the meeting anyway. Um, Patty, we're going to start with Dr. Carey. You would like to start with Waverly Elementary School? Elementary School. Yeah, we can. Okay. And I don't know why. I feel Sorry about that. The, what we were working on is we did get it going, but it was blinking. Uh -huh. And then we tried another computer, and that one didn't even work. Okay. So I'm going to go through this with you. It's a very quick presentation, but I do want you all to see it. And you have a handout in your, yeah. um, one is for Waitley and one is for Frontier. So the Waitley one, the first, uh, you can see our wonderful students and everyone's happy. And uh, when we look at the next uh, slide, this is our district mission and our district vision statement that the, everything that we do in the district comes from these, uh, the mission and the vision. So everything we do, and really what we're focusing on of course is you can see our strategic plan which was voted in last October and we're essentially what we're trying to do what we use the tax dollars for is to ensure that we have the highest quality education available uh, that the kids are building critical thinking skills that we have the best inclusionary practices research-based and that the we have collaboration time around personalized learning technology and assessment calibration. So we use a lot of our professional development time for these. Uh, when we talk about providing our professional development, we're also working on teachers monitoring student progress. So that way we know our kids are making the progress. So this is really what we're about, the district strategic plan, instructional practice, assessment and data analysis, and special education services. So that's where the money goes. The next um, slide is the student and staff data. We have 140 students enrolled right now. And we have 12.8% of our students are students with disabilities. We have 11.4 of our students that are economic, economic and disadvantaged students. So those are students that come to us and they receive free and reduced lunch and uh, so they're and Title I is tied to that and excuse me. So here would you, would, you, would you like questions after or during? You can ask during. It, it's fine. Just let me know. Okay. I, I have a quick question. There's no more time for that. Well, the word over there. Where? Yeah, but, you know, okay. you can just Just a quick question. What do you consider a highly qualified teacher? Highly qualified that they have all of their JESSE certifications in order, that they are certified to teach in the area that we hire them to teach. So we don't have a regular ed classroom teacher teaching special ed in a special ed capacity or we don't have a speech and language teacher who doesn't who's not certified by the state at the moment. so they have to be certified gotcha. in the areas they are they're highly qualified they're certified so we're not using anyone on waivers okay. exactly so we have teaching personnel we have 14.8 and the point eight, of course, is because we have point two art, point five music, and whatever. So it's we don't have some full time people; they just come. We have eight instructional assistants in the building. We have one principal. We're choosing in forty three students, and eleven of our students, our Waitley residents, are choosing out. We have one that is charter school out. Correct. Yeah. One question. <clears throat> you see the teacher data, and I, I just, I'm, I'm pretty sure I know how many teachers there are in the school. Um, 
what other positions are in the school, or are you going to get that? I will, but I can tell you there's a, some clerical positions. So yep. we have the secretary, there's two cafeteria workers, there's two custodians, and... Counselors? Counselor, the counselor is... She's, mm -hmm. she's, split yeah. one, she's split between part-time counselor, part-time psychologist. So okay. I will get to that. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump ahead. I just, I was looking at the data, so I just complimented but I'm talking about teachers right now. Yeah. So these are the increases and the decreases that are driving our budget this year. So we have the contracted salary increases, uh, step increases, and longevity. So people are moving up and they're moving sideways, and that's a net of $34,774. There's an increase in the central office percentage for Waitley, and it's going from 9.21 to 10.16, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, decreases, so $1,800 in spent transportation, $16,000 in electricity and heat, and uh, re retirement buyback expenses is down $12,000. So we, the net is, uh, actually the net is a 2.2 increase or $33,159 over last year's budget. That's what we're asking for. So the entire budget is $2,118,366. The proposed budget that we're asking the town appropriation is $1,673,415. But that also within that you get your chapter seven money to help offset that $1,600,000 we're asking for. It is $33,000 above last year's uh, credit. So last year's uh, request for budget. So it, it supports a contracted net increase in salary allocations of the collective bargaining agreement of $34,700. We're supporting operational net increases of uh, $29,900 and net decreases of $31,000. And we'll show you all that as we move on. We also have in revenue sources from school choice, spent revolving, early childhood, and spent grant. So is it, is it 33 uh, pertaining to the 1 million six? Or yes. Or does it pertain to the two? Nope, it pertains to this. Mm -hmm. so, okay. the, what we're asking the town is for $33,000 over what we spent, what we had last year. There's, there's been an update. There's a version three. Because these things changed in the um, central office allocations when we had to uh, figure out the union percent and when we get the union calculation. So there's a version three that they're voting on on March 12th. Oh. So it's a little bit different. Oh, we haven't had our budget. Um, we haven't had our budget hearing yet. So it changes to what? So it, we, we would be asking for an increase of two and a half percent of forty-one thousand three dollars. Over the, instead of the thirty-three thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to make a note of that. Instead of thirty-three thousand, it's going to be um, forty-one zero zero three. So we're asking for seven thousand more. So Patty, how do we tell which of these packets is the updated information and which one is? You don't have it. You don't have you, it. Does that, so you nobody has the updated information? We do have the updated. You do have the updated. We do have the updated. So that would have been the email that I got. If you guys got version three in the copy of the first page, that's the new one. Version three. On the front page. Front page. Yeah. Like, like these things don't say any yeah. version of them. Yeah, no. Yeah, the bottom one, that was Okay. That's top cover sheet is my budget sheet for the for the oh, yeah. okay. So these numbers haven't changed though. These are our other fundings. So special education grant is providing us with twenty four thousand two hundred and fifty dollars and that supports instructional assistance salaries. Our early childhood revolving is eighty eight thousand two hundred and twenty nine and that is paying for a teacher and instructional assistance salaries in support of the inclusive preschool learning. School choice is 332463 That helps to pay, that pays teacher salaries, instructional assistance salaries, 
and medical and therapeutic services, which is OT and PT that our special ed students need. So we are getting, receiving right now $444,951 in other revenue sources. Can I jump in with a question real quick? I think it might be Patty. Patty, I think, or maybe Dr. Carey. I think in, in the overview that you, uh, that is in the actual budget itself, you made, you made the comment that Waitley, um, should not be relying on school of choice monies um, to the extent that they had been. And can you speak to that? Well, we, we try, what we've always tried to do is spend a year in arrears so that if school choice ever went away, we'd have a year to adjust. Um, and so right now, we are not spending a year in arrears, we're spending a, a year and a half. So now we've only got a half a year cushion. Should I guess the be better happy? question is what's the trend with school choice? Um, is it going down? Is it going up? Is it flat? Is it going like this? I, I put that at that open It's pretty level. Well, so you think no, it's going to stay in level? Enrollment is going down for residents. School choice is filling the gap, but. It's staying it basically yeah. flat for the time being. Right. The oh. revenue, the revenue coming in is flat, and but what we're putting on it is salaries that increase every year, so it's not going to keep up. Right. Okay. So okay, this is the right. this is the fundamental risk with the school budget is that Absolutely. the school choice funds are diminishing. Right. So the forty out of the hundred and forty roughly students. If you somehow if school choice went away, you lose those 40 students, and you'd have to figure out a way to cut the budget by 16 percent ish. Correct. Yeah. Because those are those are necessary services that are on there, um, right. and maybe some of them would be reduced because the school choice students take part in those. Um, it might mean we don't need a full time speech therapist. It might be that we would reduce our music and our art. But we would want to keep classroom teachers pre-K to six, regardless of. Um, sure. Okay. It was just a. I mean. mm -hmm. So that funding um, from our other funds is stable. It's four hundred forty-four thousand. So this is where we're asking to spend the money. So we're our money goes. 69% of the money that we receive from the other sources of funding, from Chapter 7, from Town Appropriation, 69% goes to instruction. Other student services, that's transportation, health services, food services, that's 6%. Facilities and operations, that's 11%. That would be the building, of course. And then administration. When you say instruction, I'm assuming it kind of sounds like it's just what happens in the classroom teacher yeah, and I'll materials, show you that. Yeah, but that's not the case. No, I'll show you that. Okay. So I'm breaking this down into the different, the four different areas where we spend money. The 1,000 lines, which is uh, uh, administration, the 2,000 lines, which is instruction, the 3,000 lines, which is other student services, and facilities and operation, 4,000 lines. So revenue sources, the town appropriation and the combined with the chapter 70 gives us 79 percent of our money school choice gives us 16 percent of our money early childhood revolving gives us four percent of our money and then our sped grant is up here at one percent what's early childhood revolving is that reflect so we have an early childhood program where students come all day grades three and four we're full and there's a waiting list it's an extremely uh, well thought of and popular and very high quality program. Ages three and four, not grades three and four. No, ages three and four. No. So preschool. preschool. It's preschool. Yeah. I, I know, but I, I heard you say grade three and four. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> no, so it's ages, for the record. Three three and four. Four. ages three and four. And what's happening is um, some of those students pay tuition, full tuition. Some pay tuition on a sliding scale if they're on reduced lunch. Others if they're coded or identified as a student in need of um, 
uh, as special education services, if they're identified with a disability, they come for free. Because we're, by age 2.9, the district is responsible for teaching those children and once they're identified with a uh, disability. So we're getting money, it's not 30, you know, it's not 15 students at $20,000 a kid. It's all different funding. That funding comes together in a revolving budget. And we use that money to help support that program in the school. And last year, the school committee allowed us to go from a half-day program to a full-day program with aftercare. And now it's, it's just taken off on its own. So a real added plus for the school. So when you say uh, aftercare, what is that? Parents pay for, they pay tuition yeah. to, for an aftercare program. So okay. we have out of school time from 3 to 5.30, but the preschool students cannot be in with the older students, the students in an after school time. Gotcha. So we call it aftercare, and we have a specific person that takes care of those students after school time. So that allows more parents to join um, the program, right. and but they're paying for it. Okay. Do you have any data yet <clears throat> on the number of students who are in the program from outside of Waitley who will school choice in because the program exists. I think that Pete might have some information on that. Yeah, I don't have the exact numbers. Yeah, right. I wasn't planning to answer that question in particular, but yes, I can tell you that not only are we getting requests for school choice, but our school committee, um, we made sort of a formal or an informal arrangement that those students who are already in our pre-K are going to get accepted for school choice uh, on a preferential basis. Right, but I, I guess my question is how many of them are, are wanting to? I, I can think of about four out of the 18 we have right now, I think. Are all 18 from outside of Wayland? No. Right, that's my question. Are those outside of Wayland? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm sorry. I yeah. misunderstood because in pre-K we don't call them school course, choice right. kids, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's a mix of kids. It's probably half our Waitley kids and the other half come from a variety of towns. Because it it's a great marketing tactic as much as it's a great education. Yes, sir. So is this going to be is this going to be a stagnant number as part of the budget, or do you see it going up or down, decreasing? As the program takes off, it becomes more popular. It would go up. It would definitely go up. And maybe I could just add those funds can only be used for the preschool, though. So to the extent we collect okay. more revenue there, it doesn't the necessarily. The but the school is funding part of the, or the preschool right now, so that it would help to offset those funds potentially. So, but it's a tuition based program. Mm -hmm. So, what would go up? The, the number of students can't go up. There's already a waiting list. So, what would go up? Well, it could, the dynamic could change where instead of sliding scale kids, we would get full paying. Uh, one year, uh, one or two years, we would have less special ed students that would come for free. We'd have more slots for full paying students. So because we have a, a whole array of payment schedules, depending on who you are, what your needs are, and um, if, if, you're diagnosed, if you're identified with a disability, or if you're uh, economically disadvantaged, or if you're not. So that the number of kids is not changing. No, no, the law is okay. So it could go the other way, that there's more free kids in it, the It could, but it could, go I, the other way. It, it would probably, hopefully it would not go that way, but you know, we, we need to take in our disabled, only weightly disabled kids from the age of 2.9. So we do need to take them, but I don't think we, okay. I think weightly has a very large percentage of students that are um, needing in that area. So this is um, administration. So not breaking it down in those four areas we spoke about. 12% of the budget of Waitley School is the administration. The school committee and legal services is 2% of that. 2% of 12%. The superintendent and business offices is 19% of 12%. So if you look at 12% of the pie, 19% of that would be your superintendent and your business and finance offices. And they're the ones that do all our paperwork, our purchase orders, and all that stuff. Uh, District-wide information and management technology. Again, out of the 12%, 11% of that is uh, our district-wide information management. And those are the great guys 
that go around and make sure that your IT is working properly and uh, those things. Uh, Building-based leadership and clerical services, so 57% of 12% is the principal and his clerical services, his clerical people, the school secretary. So you were asking about the instruction piece and, and they're not considered teachers, so they come under the administration numbers. So this uh, building-based leadership and clerical is here. And within your 12%, 57 of that percent of 12 is there. And then you've got your human resources and benefits for 11%. When we look at instruction, instruction of course is the biggest part of the budget because that's really what we do. This is teaching. This is people who are with the kids. The teachers are, when you look at 69% of the budget, 63% of that are your teachers. Your certified, highly qualified teachers who teach academics. We also have a guidance counselor, psychologist, and they provide therapeutic services. That's 12%. These therapeutic services are in there with OT and PT and all of that, but that's 12% of 69% goes for your guidance. Supplies, equipment, and material is a very small 5%. And that is uh, coming out of that 69%. You, we have a curriculum coordinator or director. We have a SPED director and an early childhood director. And they are 5% of your budget. But they also supervise um, all the uh, academics and the programs that we have. And then we have instructional assistance. And that is only 10% of 69% of our budget. So. Then uh, we look at our facilities and operations. Well, 11% of our budget, again, a small number of our budget is spent on our facilities and operations. That's our building. The maintenance of building grounds and equipment is 33% of 11%. <coughs> Custodial services is 33%. We have utilities, heating. Utility and heating services is 28%. And then the networking and telecommunications, and that's the infrastructure. Um, the wires, the servers, all of those things, and that's 6% of 11%. Uh, we also have other student services, and this is 8% of our budget. 8% of our budget, out of that, 35% goes for transportation. Medical and health services, our nurse, our medical supplies, that sort of thing is 39%, and our food service is 26% of 8%. And so when you look at 8% of the budget, then you take 26% of that or 39% of 35. And that's what you end up with. And these are our wonderful kids doing great things. We, uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful school. And the generous support of our school and our school community and Stakeholders and waving, we appreciate everything. We couldn't do it without it. So, can I ask a couple questions? Sure. I'm wondering first, I saw your IT hardware mm -hmm. in your ops, but then I also saw IT mentioned in another pie chart. How do you distinguish between the two? Can you okay. go back? Because I just, sure. I, I'm. Okay. So in administration, we have district-wide information management and technology. Yeah. Okay, that 11% is, we have four, uh, we have four employees. Staffing, okay. That staff that work on the infrastructure, that set up the computers, that troubleshoot, all yeah. of that stuff. And uh, we also have a person that uh, has a piece of data collection that needs to go for Nessie. Sure, yeah. And we have a, te a, a position where there's a teacher that actually teaches the teachers how to use the technology. So for instance, in Waitley, they do FaceTime and they do uh, these things with uh, Africa. So when Terry Anderson was over in Africa, they were able to connect via um, chat or whatever that is. The, uh, anything that we use that programs, new programs coming in with software, they help put it together okay. so the teachers know how to use it. Effectively, we have MCAS 2 now, which is done online, it's required by the state, 
these people help that. So when we, when we move on to um, this networking and telecommunications, the phone, the... Uh, so that's your cabinet. Yeah. Sorry, for sure. That's yeah. the infrastructure And itself. so the, the internet and all those things that, uh, we, the bills that are recurring that we need to pay to be able to have that. Okay, okay. And then my second question, the therapeutic services, what's the definition of that? That is over your therapeutic services, speech and language. So they're not teaching, they are providing a service that's required by the individual learning program, the individual- The IEPs? Yeah, individual education program. Yeah. There's OT and PT. So OT is occupational therapy, that's like a point two person. Yeah. But that, that service comes under therapeutic. Okay. Um, then you have uh, physical therapy. We have students that yeah, can you farm all of this out. No, they're contract the workers. Person that, no, the person that does it in Waitley, point two or point three goes to another school in the union, Union Thirty Eight. Yeah. So we, they, they sure. run for each individual piece of that therapeutic yes. service right. delivery. Right. Okay. So they don't have a full time OT or PT. Yeah, sure. But. So those and the guidance and the psychologist, the guidance counselor does lessons and psychologist will test the students to see if they require special ed services. Every three years, the law requires that we, if I have an IEP every three years, it's called a triennial, I need to be tested again to make sure that I still have that disability or have I improved, can I change the list of services I need? So we need to have a, a psychologist to do that, but ours is one person. Isn't it fair to say, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that a good chunk of that 12% would be paid out of Title I, though? I wouldn't say Title no. I because we don't get Title I. You don't? Well, Waitley does not qualify for Title I okay. because of the low percentage of frame reduced. Okay. And um, we didn't get it before they changed the, the, before the federal government changed the definition. And now that they have changed the definition, we definitely don't okay. qualify. But so we're, we're on the hook for those services? Correct. Title, no. Title I services would be more push-in services where the, the Title I we get the other schools we use for our reading specialists yeah. to offset their salaries. Um, they, they, they're intervention, reading interventionists. So a little bit different in the service delivery. Right. Well, the, the whole Title I is not even that large anymore. Right. I mean, it's really negligible. Okay, I, I just was, yeah, I just. But we do have the grant, the special ed grant is paying for at least one as, uh, instructional assistant the early childhood revolving that we talked about earlier is paying for the teacher and an instructional assistant. They're, that early child, of course, the tuition comes in and it pays for that. And then the school choice is paying several salaries, uh, teacher salaries, instructional assistant salaries, and That's some fine. medical and therapeutic That's services. Fine. Yeah, I just was, okay. I have a question. How does how does how do these percentages compare to other schools of this size, and e and even the sub on the sub high part of it? I see the big percentages, and then I see the lower ones. I would say um, when I compare the, the closest comparison to Waitley is Conway, and they're very similar. Conway um, is actually quite similar. I think Conway might have more uh, a higher percentage of instructional assistance because they have a program called WINGS, which is taking students that are emotionally fragile and behaviorally challenged, and those students, they have, there's a specific psychologist and specific teacher, but they also have more instructional assistants working on those kids who need those specific services. We don't have a program of lately like that. So our percentage of instructional assistants is very low. We need to have instructional assistants. They, we need them to do uh, recess duty. We need them to do uh, monitoring students during lunch, during drop off, pick up, uh, outside. Uh, they have an, a, a lot of duties, but they also are being used for double dosing students, which are academics. They, they help the teacher teaches the students, and then you have those students that need it twice to get it, and some kids even need it three times. But I would say they're lower here um, at Conway. It, this is the same, roughly, 
they this is the same, this is the same, same difference. Library, you know, you have one library. Uh, guidance and psychologist, uh, they have one person. So everything's roughly the same except they have more. I don't think you got my question. Do you, how do you know that that it should be 11% of the budget for facilities and operation and not 70? I understand that the 69 is here for instruction. Maybe that should be more or maybe the facilities and operations should be more and administration should be less or the right. back part should be less. Well, I don't know how you know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, well, I'll tell you, in a few minutes we're going to look at Frontier. And Frontier is a little bit different. And so the question came up last night in Sunderland. Well, why is Frontier only 52% teachers? Well, you've got the pie for Frontier. Now that's a regional district. And there's so many other slices that come out of that as opposed to Waitley. So it really depends on your school, your town, what's what, where the money's coming, where it's going. The students in Waitley are not as needy, say, as the students in Conway, certainly not as needy as the students in Sunderland. So it cannot be apples and oranges. What we have is a very solid budget, and things are definitely in proportion to the need that we have. And uh, it's a very, I think it's a conservative budget, and. Uh, unfortunately, it is 41000 more than what we had originally planned, but... Um, and that was due to almost six hours of planning. Why, why did it go from 33? Oh, well, I can comment on that, is that um, this challenge with the school, price fund, school choice funding continues to um, push the school budget. And so we are trying not to put too much of the school budget on the school choice funds. And we wanted to preserve those, so we tried. To, we moved up to the 2.5 percent, which was what we were told is the amount, the percent that you were looking for, to try and get that from the finance committee if we could. Now we understand if you can't provide the full amount, but it seemed prudent to try and move as much as we could of the budget towards the school funding. In terms of the burden on the town, uh, God, the budget, as we know, health insurance is not easy. Right. So that adds uh, a considerable uh, burden, amount of burden, you know. And I was just wondering if you factored that in school committee. I did look at it. I did see how much it is, like 200 and something thousand dollars on a top of this budget. So yeah, the town covers that. We don't. We actually don't have control over the health insurance though either because. Right, right. Um, but I was also wondering when you enter into. Thank you. Negotiations. Um, does that come up? Do, 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 I mean, it's not free. Unfortunately, none of us, have, none of us in this room, except maybe Mr. Halla, have been here long enough to be in a negotiation. Um, we. This is FY19. Is the last year uh, of the, the three-year contract that we have with both uh, unions, um, teachers and IAs, union and Frontier, um, but. It, it's it's tricky. I mean, if we look at just the if we look at just the chain. Well, first of all, let me back it up and say that the co the insurance costs get reported to the state as costs paid by the town on behalf of the school. So they, they go towards our net school spending. We it does get reported. I ask I ask for those figures at the end of every year, and they get reported. Um, there's other things that could get reported as well. And it's one of the things that uh, Dr. Perry and I have on our agenda after budget season to talk with the uh, four town administrators. Um, I don't know why, 10, 15 years ago, indirect cost agreements were supposed to be developed between the select boards and the school committees as to what could be charged. Because not just it's not just, um, if you look at it, it's just not that health insurance. You're also paying a pay, uh, cost of Medicare insurance. Sure. You're also paying a cost of uh, part of the Franklin County assessment should be applied to us. Um, but when I got here, there were no agreements, and people were just saying, just use this percentage. Well, you can't just use the percentage. We've got to figure out what the actual number is. Right. And so that's something that's on our to-do list. Mm -hmm. um, Don't we also pay the choice out? Charter. You do. Schools, the towns are responsible for that. Oh, is included in that. Right. So, so for complete 
right. transparency with the town on town floor, I think it's important. And I think it's important that we do this with every department in town and uh, we roll in whatever costs are incurred by that department um, for also, transparency. When we go into negotiations, I think that information from each town needs to go, each representative from their towns needs to bring that information forward. It's not just salary and steps and negotiations, but it's also what all these other indirect costs. We need, to, we need to make sure that we're cognizant of that when we negotiate so that we can get an understanding, a transparency, but an understanding yeah. between the two yeah. sides. And, and the other thing I was going to, what my point there was getting to, Paul, was that when you're talking about insurance with the unions, there's specific laws that cover it. And it's just like what we're going through right now with the changes with the Hampshire Group Insurance Trust. So we asked the union to allow us to change deductibles and add a few, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, um, co-pays, increases in co-pays. And now we have to share with them 25% of the savings. So with the changes, the plan's gonna go up 4.97%. Without the changes, it would have gone up 10%. So we've got to figure out the difference between the 10% and the 4.9 by person. And they get 25% of those savings. And it's interesting, it's important to point out that the 25% of savings isn't actual dollars saved, it's just an, a reduction Stop in the expense that would have been money. ordinarily incurred. Right. So yeah. it's finding an additional amount of money. It's not just saying, I have $12,000, I'm gonna give you three of them. If, Correct, if the because that's why the, the, the version that Dr. Carey's looking at and the version I have, that's one of the reasons, because we finally got the numbers, we finally did the calculations and finalized the calculations of what we would have to share, and that is what changed our numbers is the 25%. Is the <laughs> yep. right. Those numbers didn't come in, not that I'm, you know, they didn't come in as, um, it took them a while to get the numbers to And it always yeah. does. Yeah. Uh, but we would say that, you know, the final, I mean, by the time the, uh, the new negotiation process starts, no one on this committee, nobody sitting here is going to know they started, that they're ongoing, except for the school committee school committee themselves so I would put the onus on the school committee to please take the um, side of the town and make sure that during those negotiations I think there's a town rep. well yeah there's a town rep from you guys in four towns no, we right. never we never hear about those meetings yeah never. well it's, it's up, last, it's up to the select board to talk closed. to the last town time time Kevin has been on the last and I've been quite on a few of, I, of, of um, instructional assistant um, Negotiating. Yeah, right. That was on one at one point. Right. There are select board members from the towns on these committees that are negotiating. The last time they had it was closed. And we found out at the end because they offered 35 years plus a master's degree at the end. And I don't know why they would have done that. Okay. okay. Anyway. Anyway, ask a question. Uh, okay. Our weighted budget is going up 2.5%. What are the other three towns going up? Um, Waitley, Sunderland is out when it's close to four. Um, it's hard to pull up things when over here. Oh, um, Maybe while they're doing that, I could just add one comment on the percentages when you're asking how these compare to other schools. Is I think I wanted to just also acknowledge this is the first time we've done this kind of analysis, yeah, I, I, and I, I think I it's that. really really helpful, that's and it will give us a good benchmark. Where these numbers kind of came from. Right. And I think, it, it, to me, it's it's um, comforting to see that the bulk of the per, um, expenses are going to instruction. Like right. that's maybe, where you want your money to be, be going be primarily. And that, that gives us more opportunity to educate us to be able to ask more questions. Right. So I'm sitting here. Obviously, 69 percent of that budget is going towards instruction. Which is great. Whether that's great or not, I don't know. Is that the I, same but what I will say is. We have roughly a, I mean, Pete, what would you say would be the ideal student to teacher ratio? I think that we have a, our, what we're shooting for in our school is 18 to 20. And I think that is ideal. But that's not, but if you look at what your enrollment is, it's 140. Right. And what your teaching personnel is of 14.8. 
That's a 10 to 1. Well, but the question you asked me was what's ideal in a classroom, and the, and the answer to that question is that 18 to 20 is ideal. If your class is 25, 26, that's too big. If, quite frankly, if your class is 12, that's too small. And yours are. Um, and and there, are, there are reasons why, uh, no, we're not. We are, it says right here, you're we're at 70. 140, and that your we're teaching personnel is 14.8. Right, but those are, that includes specialists too. If you look at our classroom size, we have 17.5 is our average okay, classroom well, size right now. instructional assistance either. Well, he, throw well, those in with another eight. Right. He's talking about specialists with the teachers. So like music and Yeah, so th um, that number, that 14 includes. Right. But they're not, they're not full time though. But your point is a good one. I, I guess that's my point is that this that is great. And you can look at it or you can dig it, we can spin it any way we want. Right. You know, I mean, I'm starting trying to spin it one way and just to we'll, put the pressure We'll spin it the other way. <laughs> but when you got 70% or 69% of your budget going towards that, I would say student and staff data is the thing that, once you know anything, you should be looking at because that's where the biggest buck is big. And so, I don't know. I, I, but if I was you, that's the area I'd be looking for small action groups, you know? Maybe you could come in here and say two and a half percent is fair. Yeah. So I guess it's fair, but I don't want to just rubber stamp a budget every year. We want to keep continue to get educated, you know, make edu educated decisions based on good data that you're giving us. And I and I, there's sort of a follow up to that, um, Joe, and that's um, we're all concerned about school of choice in China school. Is 2.5 percent. Are we getting ahead of the curve here with with this, or are we still behind the eight ball? And the perception is that the quality and the value is not within the walls of our school, but is somewhere else. And that's and and, and I I think Joe my. Am I going down the same path here? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just did the quick math and I was looking at choice in, 30%. Choice out, 8%. You know, your, your charter school, you know, your out is one. So you're plus 31, you're living on school choice. Oh, you're living on it. I don't know what the numbers look like last year, but we, I, you can say we're level, but our costs are going up and our $5,000 per student is flat. I'm telling you, I'm preaching to the choir. I know I am, but we've got to build a better mousetrap here. That's what we. That's yeah. what we have to figure out how to do. Which is why we we're moving. We're trying to move some of our personnel costs off of the uh, school choice budget and put it back on the town appropriation. But to go back to this question, yeah. Sunderland is asking for 4.6. We were there last night. I'm sure we'll be hearing from them. Uh, Conway 3.48, Deerfield 2.88, and uh, we'll be looking at Frontier uh, 3.09. And these are what I would, these are all what we would call level service budgets. The only, um, I think, I believe the only um, school that we're asking for an increase in personnel is Sunderland, and that is they need an early childhood, uh, childhood interventionist because of the number of kids coming into Sunderland with such high needs at the pre-K. Um, age. So if if you so ours at two and a half percent, that is you're you're using a, a future year's uh, school choice budget of you said half a percent. So if we were to say uh, we think one percent is reasonable increase instead of two and a half, you could take money out of that pot that you have for future choice, future year's school of choice. Kids, right? Well, like, I, I can't spend more than FY19. Yeah, but you said you're already taking it half a, a year. We're ahead spending of time. Out, uh, We're spending all of 18 and part of the 19. So we only have a small part of 19 left to go to. And then, so if we get one move in that it would require us to go out of district that we couldn't maintain. And first of all, Waitley doesn't have a special program, so we would absolutely be having to um, tuition them out hopefully to one of our sister schools that would have a program. But then if we didn't, if they couldn't maintain that child and they had to go out, we'd have, we'd have no cushion to fall back on for that tuition. And it's happened this year. This year we've had two students that have gone to special programs that we did not count on. 
what's, what's, what's the, approximate, the value of the school choice? What do you mean the value? The dollar value. You're, you're, well, we're going to, I'm going to do, a, we're, we're going to go through all the number. Okay. I, we're, we're jumping all okay. around here. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I apologize. Uh, we're, we're, we're still on the Whateley Elementary School, right? Yes. Correct. Okay. okay. Sure. In the 2.5%, there's, to my eye, there's nothing new. We're getting, we're not buying anything new out of this. It's the same educational program that we've had in years past. Mm -hmm. And at the risk of getting the people to my left upset with me, um, I guess one of the things that I personally would like to see, because we are in the age of school competition, is a budget that perhaps is asking for even more than this because we have a gifted and talented program suddenly at the school, because we're providing some type of um, laptop device to our older students, to make Waitley Elementary School and the town of Waitley such an appealing place to be that people want to move to the town and people, even more people want a choice into the town. So that we're doing we're doing what we do better than everyone else. But if, wait, let me. Just, but if you if we continue to ask for the the incremental budget increase that we're asking for at 2.5 percent this year, last year was two, whatever it is, we're never going to excel at what we should be excelling at. We we we, sh we should be offering a gifted and talented program, and we should find money for that. We should be offering. Um, devices for our older students, and we should find money for that because that's what 21st century education is about. I, and and you know, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you at all, but you, we, I don't think we want to go in the direction <clears throat> that Deerfield did, where when they were backfilling. So when they got to a point when they only needed two sections of a class of a grade, they were backfilling a whole new section with school choice. Absolutely. So the, 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 and, right, and, and I'm not advocating right. that. No, and no, no. So we don't, we don't want, we don't and, want that. Right. But, but our classrooms aren't full yet, and so. But they're, but they're getting. And and if we could get more people right. moving into town because they value the quality of education that we're providing. Would be great, or if people start having some babies. But that no, but that happens. <laughs> that <laughs> that, 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 that yeah, happens. That that, 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 that that demand happens when you provide a better process. That's Ex that's true. Exceedingly better. That's true. Than all the other surrounding districts and that's the kind of budget I'd like to see some and that and, and that holds true for Frontier as well as, uh, as well as Wheatley Elementary whether or not I'd, I'd like to see a higher budget I mean I agree with what uh, you said in terms of the quality in terms of value um, but what disturbs me is that when educators who, who do a fine job lose the vision and here i am here we are we should be talking to you people about reducing because you want more you want more and we so we should be trying to pare that down so that it fits in our shoebox okay we should have you should be coming to me and saying us and then saying here's budget here's the cadillac plan this is what we would really like to put in Waitley Elementary School, and here's the reason why. Because we think with the Cadillac plan, these kids are gonna develop in this manner, and they'll be ready for secondary school in this manner, and they'll be ahead of the curve as compared to this school. Well, so that's, but we don't see that, because, and I understand why, because it's so, because of the money issue and it's just so much time to put this kind of stuff together it's not just that i mean with all due respect paul i've been here six years now and we've come to you with the cadillac and, you, and we, then you said this back to cut i don't remember her hearing gifted and talented well not budget. gifted and talented but or, we've or, come or, in or with, or with the request of four percent and five percent and you said go back and cut it and well, we don't understand but around? there's no correlation between that and <clears throat> why that's a cadillac plan I, I, I can't look I have a 
tough time remembering what happened six months ago. You want to see you the know, difference between the two plans and what are we going to get for that difference? Yeah. You well, know, getting more teachers, more instructional want, aids, or what? You what want are we some compelling uh, evidence as to what what the Cadillac would provide. Right. Yeah. For something right. that would. Right. You know, the yeah. devices for the students. That, and again, I know I'm hooked on that. But that, that is what 21st century, century education is. I know, because we're going to end up paying for a private school education at a public school. Right. That's what I don't want to get into. Hold on. Um, Bob? I've been on the school committee off and on for many years. I can't even tell you how many years, but it's been a long time. Back in the day when school choice was school choice, and we used school choice for the kids, we bought our first big set of computers that cost us like fifty thousand dollars. We had we had like ninety, and we spent fifty on this thing that rolled around to the rooms many many years ago. We didn't pay for teachers and specialists and more teachers and more specialists, <clears throat> and we always had a little bit for a rainy day for that year. And guess what? We're a year and a half out because we're trying to keep a budget at 2% or 2.5%, if we kept on putting all these people in that budget, we would have a budget at 6 7 8% every year because we had to have these people, some teach specialists, to take care of our kids. And if they take care of other kids that are school choice, those towns have to pay for all those services not just the 5,000, if a kid costs an extra 10 or 11, that town has to pay for it. We don't pay for it. But you used to say, well, can't you spend a little bit more school choice back 10 or 15 years ago? Well, we always wanted for a little rainy day. We don't have that rainy day anymore. None. Right. There's nothing there. And we actually right. had to use our school choice money to mm -hmm. get on the mass infrastructure because they forgot us. Mm -hmm. When they put it, when they were putting the rural consortium for the um, for to get us in the internet, they forgot Waitley Elementary. We had to wait till last after they finished the entire um, Western Mass, and then we had to pay for that out of our own pockets because they forgot Waitley, Massachusetts. I think we have to keep in mind what is the goal, what is the quality measures that we're looking for. We don't really, we haven't defined those yet. I think Waitley is a quality program right now. I think we, we on the school committee and the administration need to come up with some measures to help you understand. You know, the MCAS scores is one measure. They did really well this year. We invested in technology. The students have been taking the tests online and they did really well. That was one component of that. I think that's kind of the next phase of the work is figuring out what are the quality measures that will help us understand what's going on at the school. Right now we only have school choice and enrollment to kind of play with as, a, as one measure um, and word of mouth from families and students. We host a, uh, a science STEM camp, uh, camp innovation over the summer. This is something that was incredibly successful last year. It's only going to grow. And so we do all, you know, we want to continue to grow and develop an offer. Moving to a full day preschool model was a big step. And our school committee believed in us, believed in, in the pitch, and it's really paying off. It is one of the highest quality programs of all our union schools and around. Kids come from everywhere. There is a waiting list to get into our program because it is such high quality. The, the difference, uh, Waitley has a nature program, a garden program. You don't see that in the other schools. The kids come and they, they engage in this kind of learning that is not common. You don't see it in the other schools. Uh, there are many things that sets Waitley apart from the others, from the other schools in the union and other schools around, certainly. Some of our neighbors up north were hands, hand and shoulders above uh, with what we do. Look, we're not going to get, did I, did I say hand over here, Jim? Uh, you know, we're not going to uh, stem the tide of, uh, you know, charter schools and school of choice 100%. But I think, again, getting back to it, and I, I, I think how we all feel about it is that that has to be somewhere on the radar screen. How, how do we do that? How do we 
make the proposition of education in this town so compelling that parents don't see the value somewhere else and leave them and keep their children here. Well, and it's I, not I, I think about that's about value, problem. it's about yeah. convenience. Yes. Well, I, I, I'm not buying that anymore. Yeah. anymore. I'm, I'm never going to buy that again because this is now, this is now a marketplace like any other marketplace. And the consumer goes towards that product which they feel has the most value for their dollar. I don't disagree with you at all, Paul, but when, you're, when you have options like um, a Pioneer Valley Performing Arts School and you have a family that wants their child to be a value, they're not going to come, well, but we can't do what they do. No, we can't yeah. do and or if or if it's a uh, four if it's rivers charter school right i mean there are things like that that are drawing some and by the way i think that split 40 coming in and 11 coming out talk to talk to some of the folks that's from good. the other I mean, that's good that's great that's, no, that's not a bad that's thing good. Yeah. but part of it is also that uh you know uh is uh, you know the convenience factor is we we get we get kids in waitley who come to us yeah they've shopped around our area and they've chosen us, but they shopped around our area because they work in the area. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a reality, too, and we can't escape that. And we also have some of those 11 families that go out are doing it for that reason, too, because that's where mom works or dad works, and it makes it more convenient for so them the to one, do that. The one charter school we have goes to Hill down. And then the sending, two are going to Conway. Charter schools kill us, quite frankly, and they kill yeah. a lot of just not. They don't, they're, we've only got one. Only one, student, one so. at the elementary. Yeah. Well, so. <laughs> even, even so, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's what, 16, 18,000 bucks compared to the five we get for every school choice. It's 20,281 dollars. There you go, 20 grand. And no public oversight. So we need four, we need four plus <coughs> school choice kids to make get, up for that. To one, make yeah. that up. And then our school choice going out, two are going to Conway, three are going to Deerfield, five are going to Hatfield, and one goes to Northampton. So you're looking at the people on that end. Did I point the right way? No. That way. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Tell them how many choice in come from one school. Oh, okay. Our, our, cho our, our choice receiving, yeah, so we get most of it Montague. from Montague, Gail Montague. We've got 20 students. 20 of our 43 students come from Gail Montague. Wow. So half, almost half of our ends are coming from that district. And you, I don't know which gentleman asked earlier, but I just went back and um, in 18, right now we have 43. Last year we had 41. In 16 we had 46. 15 we had 51 kids. 50, in 14, we had 50 kids, and 13, which is the first year I have data for, we had 40 kids. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of up, and now we're yeah. kind of down, yeah. and now we're going back. Yeah, it's like old 40, and I have 50. But we okay. do, I, I, yeah, agree, hold on. I agree that we need to find something that will differentiate us from the others. That Waitley School needs to be differentiated, that there is something special that you can only get in Waitley. And I think that's a really fine request. And I think that we need to put our heads together with the school committee, with the administration, put our heads together. What makes, what we can do to make Waitley different and better that uh, isn't already in place. Um, two things, one's really small. You ought to be putting an article in the scoop every single issue because that's how people find out what's going on. And I get an article from the school once in a while. So that's that's one thing. It, it doesn't need to be lengthy or verbose, but if, if we could just toot our own horn a little bit, uh, then people in the town would be a lot more familiar with the value that they're getting to the school. And that, so that's just that's just a, a piece to put out. If you missed the last deadline, um, <laughs> but there's another deadline coming up in May. Um, the other so thing I, is, I he, does, he does the monthly nothing, nothing came in for the issue that's uh, in your mailbox now. Um, your monthly news no, we do our newsletter, but I think we, we, we really like, yeah, the, the previous issue had one. Whatever we can. December had a had a nice uh, article. I actually had to cut it down because it was too long. Um, about uh, all kinds of really interesting things that that are showing special things about our school. So, so that's one thing. Um, the other thing is maybe it's a little more historic, but I'm a little worried that I guess when I was behind the camera at FCAT, 
at all school committee meetings. I wasn't a member of the school committee, but I consider myself to be pretty well informed about what the school committee was doing from, from attending all those meetings. We worked really hard to get to the point where we were only spending a year in arrears mm -hmm. on school choice. And having that cushion was really, really important. And now we're cutting it down to like six months. Is that, if I understand you right? Um, so, and we're doing that to hit a number of 2%. I don't know where the 2% came from that came from our finance committee colleagues, but I'm a little worried about that. Um, and I don't know where that would get addressed, but I wanted to just put it out there. It, it took many, many years for us to get there. And I think, Bob, you were on the committee back when that was happening. Nat was on the committee. Um, it, and if Don was still the principal <laughs> back when that was, yeah. was happening, it, 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 it took really steady work to get it to the point where we had that buffer of school choice. And it saved our butts a couple of times to have that. The nice saying is, thank God for school choice for us. For us. And it's still, thank God for school choice for yeah. us to pay for all those special teachers that we have that we, which you'll see a little bit later in our presentation, okay. what we pay out of that $336,000. It's, um, thanks, yeah. um, it's yeah. seven o'clock, I'd like to kind of move on with the, uh, the rest of the presentation. Do you want to go to Frontier, or are you down with Waitley, or? Yeah, are you, how do you guys feel? Are you done with Waitley? Yeah. Is there anything else to share with us? No, you have the paperwork here. You see where the money's coming. You see where um, at the at the end of the pages we uh, look at page starting. I do have one question: is when you don't spend the money that's appropriated for the um, particular, particular school year, whatever, school year? whatever line yeah. item, what do you do with that? The school committee it determines. If there's any money left over at the end of the year, we bring it to the school committee and then they determine what it is we need to do. Uh, generally, that money would be used to do something that we wouldn't have done otherwise, that we didn't have. I think last year we replaced the roof, correct me if I'm wrong, roof on the shed that was falling yeah, falling down on the, the garage shed out there and stuff. So I know I part blame, of it was used there. I was blaming the administration for spending the money, but we got somebody else. Well, I've got questions relevant to both Frontier <laughs> and Wait. Okay, I'll hold, I'll hold it off for Frontier. Okay, okay fine. Um, uh, just to finish up with, with the, um, with the, the Wait the Elementary. Yep. If you look at page 16 of 28, you'll see again, um, you will see what the, <clears throat> what our increase is. Again, it's the $41,003, and the proposed for the, the town assessment, or the town appropriation, rather, $1,681,000, and that is an increase of $41,000. If you look at the next page, page 17, you will see all of the other funding sources listed and what they are paying for. So if you go to page 19, you will see school choice is paying for a specialist teacher. So the town appropriation is paying for one and then professional salary for a specialist teacher. Down there, medical and therapeutic services, you can see that they're paying school choice, speech, physical therapy, occupational therapy, Further down, paraprofessionals, their school choice is paying $121,000 for paraprofessionals. And then if you go back up again, mostly we use our funding for salaries. Early Childhood Revolving is paying for a professional salary. It's paying $27,000 for the teacher on page 19. There's a little substitute money in there. And then paraprofessional, $55,000 of our paraprofessionals is paid by the early childhood. And that pays for the paraprofessional or the instructional assistant in that program. <coughs> and then our SPED grant is paying for an instructional assistant. So that will show you where that funding goes. And then if you look on page 25 of 28, you will see the town appropriation, the total school choice. And again, this is the pie chart we looked at. 
the early childhood involving the SPED grant, and then what we actually spent. And Pat, Patty can talk to you about page 26. This is the school choice conundrum. Yep. And again, she's going to just go over it one more time so we're all on the same page, if you don't mind that. So um, on the left is what we had projected at this time last year, that we would be getting, we would be using $24,373 of FY18 money. And our revenue for 17 was 228,870 is what we anticipated. What actually happened is we had a positive balance to bring forward of 19,212, but our revenue was short $5,121. Um, we had anticipated spending 316, we ended up spending 365, so we started the year 122,358 in the negative. And then now our FY18 projected um, revenue is 323,356, and we're going to be spending 332,463, which means we're using 131,465 of 19 money. And that it happens because we get paid a little bit at a time we get over paid the year, of so we can business. we can spend some of 19's money towards the end of fiscal year 19 that it came in the door a few months earlier. Right. So on page 27, this is our early childhood breakdown. And Patty can explain that to you too, so you can understand what's in that. So when we went to, um, when we decided, when we went to the school committee and asked permission to expand the program, we had projected that um, our beginning balance would be 11,663 from the half day program that we were running. Um, and we thought we would bring in revenue of about 55,440. Um, we actually ended uh, 17 with 15,923, and right now our tuition estimate for this year is 87,658. Um, so we had only planned on spending 49,877, but right now we've added, we're, we've been able to add the, we had to add the extent day coordinator, um, and then we've added some parent involvement activities. We have to pay for some substitutes, supplies and materials, um, travel, field trips, other expenses, and summer, we have to provide summer services. Uh, if you look at 19, we're, we're conservatively estimating revenue to be 60,000. And the, the reason for this is twofold. One, we don't know who's coming in with needs that won't pay. Two, we um, don't know if anyone's going to qualify on the sliding scale. And three, we had a little bit of an anomaly this year in that some of the kids that came, came from a private school who closed their early childhood. And we don't know if they're paying for one year only to get these parents over the hump. So we don't know if, if that's going to be recurring revenue or not. So we're conservatively estimating 60000 um, but we're going to increase how much we pay um, the early childhood teacher to 27,000 of her salary, the extended day coordinator, we're adding an instructional assistant, and then we'll still have those other um, the parent involvement activities, uh, substitutes, and supplies, materials, travel, field trips. So we're looking at ending the year at $22,182. So we have an early childhood teacher. Mm -hmm. You have an extended day coordinator. Correct. What is an extended day coordinator? So she stays after the school day. So if the parents, so, so that if school gets out at 3 o'clock, Pete? Yes. So parents are not at work at 3 o'clock. So this person runs the program from 3 to 5.30 when the parents um, pick up their kids. Gotcha. Uh, I've got a question. Joyce had a question before. No, no. You always had a question before about you said you anticipate growing the program and that revenues would of course stay flat, yet you're anticipating a one third reduction in revenues. How are those two positions consistent? I just explained why we, we're concerned from my well, yeah, perspective. But, but, but the anticipation is of the program. I'm just trying to figure out why. We're anticipating that we're going to have 30 students, which is the max that we can have. But what those 30 students can pay can differ greatly well, from one year to another. 
Dr. Carey answered Joyce's question. She said she anticipated that the revenues would be flat at worst. Maybe go up a little, maybe go down a little. I, I, that's how I interpreted it. That's how, that, that's how I heard it well, also. And it just seems inconsistent, these two positions. Well, that that I, you're taking so, yeah. so conservative a view there and a very... Well, that's what it was said. Well, the actual spending is very conservative. I think we'll be back at this table with maybe some more money next year, but right now we're not going to count on that because we do not know the makeup of the students coming in. Whether they're identified as special ed students and not have to pay. No, no, I, I understand, but what you said to her before was that you would pay the revenues would be flat and that you wouldn't have a big reduction. Yeah. That's that's what I heard you say. And then it just strikes me that this is inconsistent yeah. with what was said earlier. In other words, there is one part of this discussion where you have a certain expectation. If I'm hearing right. The other part of the discussion is the reality that you don't know if this expectation will come to fruition. No, I, I understand that they don't know, but I should have said to Joyce, we don't know, we're anticipating. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, well that, that, that's whether you believe it or not. Well, where does our net revenue go? That's the it stays in the revolving fund. Um, it had, it has the, this, this program sponsors the revolving fund? Correct. Correct. It only can be touched for that program. Correct. Right. Right. So depending on what makeup of students we get, we could be making or getting more tuition money in or not, depending on well, the yeah, I, I have to understand, my, my, I, my problem is your answer earlier when you talked about expanding the program. And here you're looking at you know, a very conservative view which, in which the program either contracts or the, certainly the revenues can I'm just looking for a consistent position across those two answers. I guess there's no specific answer. Third. Yeah. We should move along. Okay, move yeah. along. There's no specific yeah. answer. Moving on. Yeah. Moving on the yeah. students we get. Yeah. The yeah. anticipation is that it will grow financially. Okay. So we don't know. I have one more question, and the principal can answer this. What do what you think the maximum capacity of students at the school would be? In the, in the, the, whole the whole school to handle, you know. What would be too many? What would be too many? Yeah. Well, 25 per classroom, eight classrooms. So how many, how many students in all of that? 500 students probably is about as high as I would see it you know, going, 500 or so. No, no, no. At, at Whaley Elementary, how many from the whole school? What's there, 140 kids there now? So, uh, uh, the enrollment at Whaley, there's 140 there now, yes. 140. Would, would be 160 too many or 180 too many? No. I don't think 160 okay. would be too okay. many, no, sir. But we, you know, if you think of it as K through six for a minute, yeah. because pre-K is a separate yeah. program that's tuitioned in, that's eight, uh, seven classrooms. If we had 25 kids per classroom, right, that's about as high as I would yeah. like okay. to see it. Okay. 175. 175. What did I say? 500. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's about the anticipation versus reality. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, Okay, are we, are we good with Whitley Elementary School? Yes. Yeah, thank, thank you. Let's, okay, uh, so let's, let's talk a little bit about Frontier. Okay. So this is just the Frontier, uh, again, same district mission statement, same district vision statement. We all follow the same um, set of values and hopes for our students. This is our as schools match wits. These are our uh, day one, and so they're moving on. Uh, again, our, dis our district strategic plan is excellent. It was, it's uh, what we follow, again, for all schools. Highest quality instruction, critical thinking skills, best inclusionary practices, uh, personalized learning, and monitoring progress. So some of the data for Frontier. 623 students right now. Students with disabilities, 132. Economically disadvantaged, the school is at 30%. Highly qualified teachers, they're all qualified to teach in the areas they're teaching. The teaching personnel number is 56. Instructional assistants, 24. There's three building administrators, if you include the curriculum director. 
160 students are choosing in, 42 are choosing out, and 52 kids are going to charter schools. Sometimes they will leave in sixth grade. Conway students are pretty well known for leaving in sixth grade and going to charter schools instead of uh, doing the middle school there. So where's, the, where's the tech school fit into that? Yeah, yeah. And then when, but that's not charter, but yeah. That's, so that's we, choice we, out? We lose, uh, we lose um, some ninth graders every year right. who, who choose tech. technical school as their pathway. So we don't get all our sixth graders. So in, if you're looking at our, our forecast on page 11 of 54, it would look like next year we would have 666. 663, but we're not going to get every one of our sixth graders, and also we lose the, some ninth graders that go to Franklin County Tech. Yeah, but where the tech school kids show up on this? They don't, but those are our kids. Yeah. It's a separate. Okay. You, you, they're not, you they're not choice out? That's a separate region that you belong to. No, they're not choice. Region. Okay. They belong to a different district. So our budget overview. Uh, the entire budget is $11,754,404. What we're asking for the town appropriation of four towns, $11,048,454. This represents a 3.09 increase, or $331,509 over last year's budget. And wait, we has a portion of that, not the entire vote. It's a piece of it based on your number of students attending. Uh, and again, we have uh, contractual obligations, we have uh, operational increases in our sewer charges, our transportation, central office, health insurance, and technology. They also have other funding sources. So what's driving our budget this year? Well, the contracted salary increases, the step increases, and the longevity, $168,055. Sewer charges of $18,850. Technology devices, $25,000. They are adding more one-to-one. -one. I think after this year, next 2019, all the students will have one-to-one -one access. Uh, health insurance, 109364 There's a Medicare tax of 11095 And then the Franklin County retirement is $45,000. Uh, so some decreases, uh, special ed summer services, $15,000 and a decrease, sped tuitions, $23,590, professional services, $11,555, and other insurances, not health insurance, but building insurances, we're saving $11,000. So we're starting to keep our own students in-house, so we have students that are um, Cognitively impaired, behaviorally impaired, autistic. Instead of sending them away to out of district placements, which could be $116,000 per student, we're actually able to keep them in Frontier Regional and give them a high quality program where other schools are sending their students to us as well. So Frontier is actually uh, receiving tuition from those students. So they receive other funds in the same way with the elementary of $705,950. $100,581 comes from the special ed grant. That is paying for teacher salaries, instructional assistance salary, medical and therapeutic services, some psychological services, and clerical support. The special ed revolving, that is when we talk about the special ed revolving, those are the special programs I think there's five special ed programs that will take in tuition kids at Frontier, and that's 119,540, and that is paying for uh, teacher salaries in these individual and inclusive learning environments. Circuit Breaker, 213,955, and that is helping to pay for classroom teachers, instructional assistance, and a specialist salary. That is, of course, our money that we get when we pay, um, explain it, when we pay so much. Patty, will you explain the circuit breaker? Oh, oh, uh, uh, circuit breaker, when you spend four times the state average, you get um, a percentage back. And we're sort of getting a double, hit with a double whammy because the legislature is funding it at lower and lower levels. And also, 
to our benefit, we're decreasing our tuition costs. We're, we're decreasing the amount of children who qualify for those services because we're providing the uh, services in-house now instead of out of district tuition. So we're getting, it's going down both ways. And the, the bad part of that is that we use that money to create the in-house programs. So we need those funds to keep the in-house programs going and yet the funds are going down. School choice uh, gives us $229,225. That pays for classroom teachers, instruction assistants, and one guidance counselor salary. Title I gives us $42,649, and that is a classroom teacher salary. Where's Chapter 70 in? Chapter 70 is in, in, let's see. So our revenue sources, 70% of our money is coming from town assessments. 24% is paid for by Chapter 70. But I didn't see Chapter 70 in the breakdown you just went over in terms of other funding sources. But because it's not a, it's not a special fund. Right. Okay. It, it, it's part of the of, of the town assessment. Because we take the total operating budget, take off the Chapter 70 budget, take uh, take off the... Uh, the okay, I just didn't see it broken down. No, because in that there's original nothing that, like that we, we don't... It, because it's, it's a reduction to the town... Assessment. Right. It would just it would be good to see that. Well, you will see it when we go through the assessment. Okay. But this right here is grant funding, so I right. should say other grant funds. Okay. This is, these are entitlement grants and money that comes in through school choice. So our proposed expenditures, instruction is 49%, other student services, 8%, administration is 7%, tuition to other districts is 7%, Employee benefits, which are included in the Frontier Regional, the towns don't pay it, that's 20%, and our buildings and facilities take 9% of our budget. Can I just, uh, well, yeah, I think this question came up before the way we know it, but here you have, you're spending 49% of the expenses on instruction. Mm -hmm. Is there some benchmark somewhere which says, you know, for instance, if you look at Whaley Elementary, it's up 60 plus. That, that says, if you're, if you're not spending 65% of your money in that classroom, so you're behind the eight ball. We, have, we actually had the same conversation last night. And what, what this means is there's just more pieces of the pie in a regional school. So for instance, if we added that other quarter of a million dollars that the town of Lady is paying for insurances, Medicare, and all those pieces, and I added that into the pie, that would automatically raise it here, but shrink it in teaching. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The orange piece yeah, I see the employee benefits. Yeah, the employee benefits. Yeah, the, benefit. the, the big thing that Right. So my right. question to you, again, as I said earlier, when we come to negotiations, that piece of the pie, that piece needs to also be out. But it also brings you back to the original question, uh, and, and I think Frontier illustrates that perfectly because it's in. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so now it's in. So now you can, now you, now you get a true picture. So instruction is getting forty nine percent of the pie. Is forty nine percent the right number? Well, I would say to you. Or do we have to grow the pie? The well, there's only 100% of something. It's got to give somewhere. And it, it, do you want to take it out of buildings and grounds? We've been doing that. Now we're looking at, a, you know, X, X, X amount of money that needs to be done at the high school. Right. Employee benefits is mm -hmm. the law. Uh, you know, tuition to other districts. And some of those employees are instructors, so you could argue that, <coughs> I don't know what percentage of the employees, but maybe half of those employee benefits are going to instructors. So do you really count that as a separate thing? I, yeah, yeah, I, right. I, I agree. There needs right. to be a benchmark right. somewhere, but maybe we're not going to get it. No. That sounds like we're not. Yeah. There are, we're going to be looking for it. There, are, there <laughs> are some new tools on the deputy website that we can go back and we can look at that. Yeah. I thought the point was uh, mm -hmm. the, the one you raised yeah. there because you can see it all together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. go, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, the revenue again. Town assessments, the four towns are helping to supply 70% of what we use. Chapter 78 is 24%. And then we have very small amount. I just went through them, the SPED grant, the Title I, Circuit Breaker, SPED of Revolving, and School Choice. So that's what's, 
So now we've broken it down into the four different areas. Administration is 7% of the $11 million budget. Building-based leadership and clerical services is 42% of 7% of the budget. School committee legal services is 3%. The superintendent business offices and finance offices is 42% of 7%. District-wide information and management technology, we talked about that. Those are the people that keep our uh, computers going and so we're looking at 49% of the budget. Half of the budget is for instruction. Teachers and department heads, 70% of that goes to teacher salary and department heads. Medical and therapeutic services is only 4%, and those are our OT, PT, and speech. Guidance psychological services, 8%. We have three guidance counselors, which you know, you mandate, you need one guidance counselor for over 200 students. Uh, and we have a um, adjustment officer, adjustment uh, counselor. Instructional assistance, it's only 10%. As the students get older, you're going to find that they don't need the, um, as the students get older, you, you see that they don't need the, uh, this is my school phone, that's the only I was going to say, I don't even have mine. They don't need instructional assistance. They do not need that one-to-one -one constantly. I think it'll be fine. If you would just ignore that, I would be pleased. Good. It's only, I have to be tethered to the school district 24-7, and so mm -hmm. they have to call me if anything is wrong in the building. So anyhow, long story short, we have uh, instructional assistance. We don't need as many as we do in elementary. Right. Oh, God. Just a quick question. It's been, I was going to ask about that because on the student and staff data, you've got almost, I mean, the ratio of teachers to instructional assistants is about two to one. Teaching. So when we talk about teachers teaching, mm -hmm. you're not including, if you look at this pie, you're not including your medical and therapeutic, your guidance, your supplies, your curriculum. So all of this, there's only 10%. When you just are taking your teaching personnel, it takes a lot more personnel to run a building. Uh, a school of that size is No, I just, but compared to like teachers? Yeah. And structural assistants? Boy, you must be paying them diddly squat. If 24 people are getting 10% of the pie and 56 are getting. Well, I, I, I wouldn't use that term, diddly squat, but it is. Um, <laughs> oh, I mean, it's 10%, and the teachers in the department heads are getting 70%. There's only twice as many, so, you know. I understand like that. For what, for what they get paid, yeah. Yeah, they're a bargain. I'm, I'm not they're saying that. They work their money. They work hard. No, they're probably worth a much more. They and, are. And, and so they're high I'm, quality. I'm pointing out something where we're, we're not paying them much, and it seems like they're of value. We rely on them. We, running the school is so important. There is an emergency at the school. Okay. Excuse me for a moment. So you guys have the pies in front of you. It's so let's, talk, yeah, okay, let's keep going. going. Let's, let's back up to the elementary school and how much they don't spend every year. So the money that's left over. What's the rolling year, five-year average? I don't have that. Yeah, yeah. Me. It's a good question, and it's, it's something we should question. look at it's a real good question. historically. So, how that happened? Another question regarding Waitley. Do you think there'd be some receptiveness to the town offering employees payment in lieu of insurance? I think the younger people are like Pretty that. quick, we're not going to have anybody to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> we need um, to turn. We need to turn. Like <laughs> Did we be changing the proportions of the insurance? No, it's not the proportions. You got some costs for your insurance. It's like self-insuring, and I think the younger people yeah. would bite at it because they're not using it. Yeah. Or you know, their, their spouse's plan or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure that that's legal. Sure, it's it's legal. Legal. Of course it is. Yes, there is this legal. I thought you were required to offer health insurance. You do you offer, do, but you, you offer, offer it. You offer cash in lieu of. Right. Yeah. So then you can still take it. It's just another different option. And yeah. people who don't take. I'm Brian, you have to go to the doctor. 
already would still uh, so superintendent's got to leave we have a fire at the high school oh, in the art department it's in the kiln smoke everywhere the basketball game oh. going on so superintendent's going to go and patty's going to finish the okay presentation why does it allow the presentation i don't do finish i said that I was glad you didn't say we in the elementary school. I mean, they're only just drop some. That's right. The chief ignored the call. That's the best part. I, you know, I shouldn't have, but I, I shouldn't have. And I told you, I'm tethered. I, I know. And then you'll go to bed. I know, but sometimes it's another superintendent saying, do you think we should cancel school tomorrow? Because it's going to rain and it's going to be 20 degrees. Oh, don't get me going on that kind <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We have this wonderful projector right Bob, let's here. Bob Lesko's up there. It doesn't work. We tried to use just it tried tonight. It. We tried it. Bob, it's 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 Bob Lesko's right on. We only have a few more to go through. Yeah, yeah, so let's just keep plowing through it. Patty, Patty, why don't you go, why don't you pick up what she left off with the hard copy and just walk us through it and... Because I don't have those swans. Um, okay, so where was she? I think we're moving to uh, Frontier Regional Services um, revenue sources. Um, so the revenue sources, 70% um, will come from the town assessments. 24% uh, will come from the Chapter 70 uh, state aid. And right. again, as in past years, we got a lovingly $20 per student increase. Um, our SPED grant, um, which is a, an entitlement grant, will provide 0.9%, Title I, 0.4. Circuit Breaker 1.8, um, our steps are revolving 1% and school choice 2%. Okay. So that would be where the revenue sources are coming from. Actually, actually Patty, I was wrong. She had, she, had she left on she number did. 11, which which was um, um, oh, the, uh, FY19 instruction. proposed budget. <coughs> yeah, we were just about going through that. We yeah. went through that and now we're over buildings for schools, budget buildings and yeah. facilities. Okay. So, all together, the, the, the buildings and facilities is 9% of our budget. So when we look at the breakdown of that, the maintenance of the buildings and grounds and equipment is 22%. Our heating and utilities are 36%. Our networking and telecommunications is 5%. And our custodial services are 37%. And this is where the question comes in that I had before. We had a big meeting in the fall about the bond issue proposal mm -hmm. with a big long list of things. And what I took out of that meeting was the biggest problem was the budgeting procedures for ongoing maintenance mm -hmm. and replacement. This does not seem to address that issue at we all. Can look, when, we look at, when we look at the actual numbers, and maybe yeah. it, it, it'll make more sense. Um, well, no, I, I looked at the numbers. It doesn't seem to be showing a major increase. You're not paying for any of those things that are no. represented in the bond issue. So we're we just, didn't know. We did not add anything to the budget. Well, that, 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 that's what I'm saying. So the budgeting issues which were brought up at that meeting have not yet been addressed, resolved in any way. That there, there that, was a they, subcommittee they, they, that was formed, and they're working yep. on it. They're, they're, you're, that you're working on it, but it's not represented in this year's budget. Correct. Okay. No, we're, it's a, it's a, if you want to call it a bond, we're, working, we're still working on it. We pulled, okay. one, we pulled one item out of it. We pulled the tractor out, the lawn tractor, whatever. That's part of a, it's a, okay. it's on a warrant or something. Okay, and the relevance to Wakeley Elementary is uh, one of, to make sure we don't end up with the same kind of big bond issue proposed at some point for Wakeley Elementary. You know, we're talking about making improvements, gifted and talented and all that. If we have a deteriorating physical plant, all of that would be useless. So is there anything going on for plan, and, and, and I know, for instance, we've already been told there's going to be major work need on the sprinkler system. Yeah, we set money aside for issues at, or spend the money. We've right. got a new roof on, we've done right. carpets, uh, fire alarms, yeah. all kinds of stuff. All, all, all that stuff is we don't see that. Should, should, should we be setting aside more money for ongoing maintenance so and repairs than we have to. The school committee has been put a standing um, agenda item on our calendars for to go over the capital items every meeting. So, and we're really pushing the administration to keep a better schedule of what's coming and keep us aware of that information so that we can be planning and forwarding that information on to all of you. They don't. We don't, except for this issue with the sprinklers. That was unfortunate, and that kind of was came out of 
um, wasn't expected. But there aren't many big items coming up at the moment, but, but we are but keeping I track of them. I saw from Frontier, it wasn't all big items. It was a whole lot of right. items. Right. There were items. Items. But when you add them all up, right. it becomes a very big item. So we're keeping track of a lot, all the little items, and we're pushing Bob Lesko and Pete and okay. Patty that, to some that, extent to help us to go with keep both, track with of both schools. Is what we're doing to avoid huge expenditures in one year. Right, it's a good point. But I'm still looking to put a generator at that, that elementary school someday. <laughs> yeah. I have, I mean, we need a place for our townspeople to go when there's another major snowstorm or, or a catastrophe in our town, we can go. Didn't we put that in the it's, budget? It's something to do it, until we open up more gas. It's it has to be reason. gas. It can't be right. diesel. It's it can't be gasoline. Time. It has to be natural <coughs> gas. Right. And that's the problem. But. But we, we still need the you, generator at our right. elementary right. school. But so the money that we set aside still is there. No, uh, it, did it get come back? I, I don't know what you did with the money. Why would you be able to put the generator in the gas is already there? The estimate came in twice the cost of what you would put. Oh, I see. Yes. Right, but the money is still set. Us. Oh, we pulled it off. I don't know what you did with it because we turned it back to you guys. The money is still, the money is still there. But the cost to do it, what's right. the money? But I'm just saying the, the, the money that we set aside originally is still there. But the cost to do it is double. I didn't want to jump on, I'm sorry, we were on capital things. I just wanted to throw my two cents like I always do about the generators. Sorry. All righty. So are we Go back ahead, on Patty. Frontier? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so, um, and then and we, uh, if you turn the next page, uh, other student services budget, uh, we spend 33% of our but of 8% of the budget on athletics and student activities, 14% um, on health services, 2% on food services, and 51% on transportation. Uh, and then lastly, um, we have 26% uh, of 27% of our budget is uh, district uh, tuition to other districts um, and employee retirement insurance benefits are 74% of 27% of the budget. So what are athletics and student activities? Uh, the, all the teams that we man. Okay, so when I, looked at, when I looked at the packet, I didn't see anywhere in here when it said the user fees were in here, revenue. Revolving fund, isn't it the activity? Oh no! Oh yeah, I did. Yes, no, I don't. I did not include that in here. No, I know. I knew that. And it's the same thing with the lunch program. The lunch program um, is something that we're working on district wide, and that you will, they will be added in here. Um, they've never really done budgets. They were just saying we're going to bring in fifty thousand and we're going to spend fifty thousand, and that's not what was happening. We were bringing in 50000 and spending 75000 So that was part of the reason the central office costs have gone up so much is that we, we the school committees voted to have one district-wide food service director to try to Increase get all revenue. of our um, costs. The goal wasn't to put us in the black, but to lessen the loss and to also increase our collections because those are the two big things that were killing us we're losing money and our parents are paying. that has been implemented we, we do we hired her yes she started and now and all the schools are computerized which uh, three of our elementary schools weren't um, which means the data of what you owe is going home more often and it's going home via email and it's going home via, uh, via letter so we're going to be presenting um, our school numbers, our new numbers, to the school committee in um, April at the joint meeting. But what are you going to do if they don't pay? Don't they can't even? Well, that's what the policy says, but the school committee doesn't um, enforce okay. it. I know, at, I know at Frontier personally, there's many times that the principal, Darius, will give the kid money because he did, doesn't have money to buy a lunch. And I'll tell you, when I, when I call, uh, nine out of ten times when I call a parent and say, when it gets to my, when they, the bill gets so large that it hits my desk, and I call and they say, listen, we got to work on this, if you give me $10 a week, we can be very understanding, and the parent, nine out of ten times will say to me, I send my kid to school with a lunch. Well, he's getting in line and taking our lunch. So whether he's eating the lunch on the <laughs> breakfast on the bus or if he's done yeah. ditching it, yeah. but if they get in line, we feed them. Yeah, yeah, right, sure. 
Because we're not going to get to the end of the line and say, hey, you, you, you know, we're going to take it away from you. We're not going to do that. We're not going to embarrass children because parents are paying. But sure. I do find that a lot that the parents say we send the lunch, but the kids want what we're serving. My kids took two lunches every day. They just need more food. Yeah. They sold them. No, no, they didn't. So they ate both of their lunch. Just so they told them. Um, get no. piggyback with Patty. The new food service person, I think, is going to work great for the five schools. You're buying for five schools. We're not having this school buy this and that's go. We're we're involved with Atlas Farms for fresh produce. Um, you know, you may laugh, but you know we're trying to we're trying to yeah, buy local and stuff what like they that. Delete. But you know, it's I don't care what school system you talk to in this state. There's no school that makes a profit. No. You're always in the black. We're always going to be in the black, no matter what. <clears throat> So we're trying to we're trying to lower that number. We're trying to get that number at the end of the year when you're saying, "What do you do with the extra money?" Guess what we do with that extra money? Well, we like we're, 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 we're like paying we're paying for that deficit. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in Waitley, where we're never going to turn a profit because in, in order to do that, we would only need one food service worker. But you can't run a cafeteria with one. Food I'm food not sure we should be turning the profit on the school. Uh, well, not that breaking, 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 breaking even, breaking even, just breaking yeah, even. Yeah, breaking even. We're again, never going right. to break even because the numbers say we should only have one person, but you can't have one person serve and and cash. Right, but let's not use that. language like turning a profit because we should yeah. not turn a profit no. on on the no. backs of kids eating. Lunch. No, absolutely nope. not. Okay. All right. Um, numbers. Did you want to get into some? So yeah. So if you want to look at um, the packet on page 11 of 54 is our student and staff data sheet, and um, the left hand side is the number of students we had on October 1st, and I freeze it at October 1st because that's what our foundation enrollment funding is based on. But if you look below, um, I, I changed the 8th and 9th and 10th and 11th grade to where we are right now. And again, it says 663. Uh, Mr. Modesto, um, who was running a 6th grade parent night tonight and couldn't be here, um, he thinks we're going to be about even because he thinks we, get, we, have 80, we have a small 12th grade class. And he thinks between what we lose to tech school and what comes in for sixth grade, we're going to be around the 623, 625 mark. Uh, on the right hand side is our staffing, and um, we're really down 1.1 uh, position. Some of it is um, Darius reallocating staff, um, and we actually cut down one IA uh, because we lost a student. Um, they were taken um, out of our school. Um, on the bottom are the teacher credentials based on what column they're on and the um, collective bargaining agreement. So we have eight with bachelor's degree, 36 of our staff are masters, 10 of them are masters plus 30, and five of them are masters 45 or CAG. No, um, masters plus 30, masters plus 45. Um, there's probably step increases in there that go along with that. So if you turn the what page, a, I can show what, additional, what additional uh, expectations are there on those teachers once they receive that and once they're paid for getting that, so they're making more and we're paying them, what more are they doing? What more are they doing where? It's a, it's a state requirement that they have to have right. their master's, master's after Correct. master's so in five order years. To keep their, in order to keep their license, they were going to continue to get educated. Uh -huh. so, so do they become the department heads? Like some, some of them, yeah. <coughs> some of them do, yeah. Okay, and um, as a department head, what additional expectations are there? Because that's another pay bump, right? Yeah. Yes. So compared to an, compared to your average classroom teacher, a department head will do what they're above in, and beyond? They're in charge of the spending. They're in charge of aligning the curriculum um, amongst the, the departmental staff. So they're doing the uh, vertical alignment to make sure that, you know, the seventh grade science is going to, you know, be the basis for the eighth grade science, which is going to be the basis for the ninth grade science. So That's what the department head does? Yes. They, what does the curriculum coordinator do? Well, yeah. they, they work with them in, in doing that. Okay. So, 
Okay. And those individuals who are now beyond the masters, there's nothing within the school system that demands more of them in terms of the teaching capacity or expectations as to how they interact with students or what they can what they can deliver to students. Based, well, based when on we that. see these, te these are the teachers that we see wanting to teach our AP classes. So, so, okay. so that is. There you go. That, that's, that's what we're the seeing. Answer. You know, the, 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 they, these are the teachers that are saying, you know, we need more advanced <coughs> placement. I'd like to teach an advanced placement mm -hmm. class because they've they've gotten the the, um, the training to do so. Yep. So yes, I mean there is a reward for them and for us. Uh, there is value. Um, in rewarding them for being educated because okay. they're, you know, they're enthusiastic about what they want to do. Fine, thank you. So okay. page 12 of 54 breaks down exactly how we go from where we are 18 budget down to our um, 19 budget of 11 million What's the increase in the sewer charge? <laughs> uh, that's the town of Deerfield. I, I know where, oh, okay. yeah, where it is. Well, how come the water's not on here? Because they're not changing the way they assess our water. Well, how do you know how much sewer you're using without you don't know how much water you're using? Well, we got a first bill. <laughs> yeah, but the first bill sewer, after many years. The sewer is reflected on how much water. Or you never paid a sewer bill. Right. Well, we right. paid a well, small. We, yeah, they didn't, small. They didn't need, they, they gave us like a small charge and didn't assess us on our use. Now they're assessing us based on use. So, well, if you don't know how much water, if you don't know how much well, water you're using, well, they, they, so, there's a meter. So there, I do know that. But so we have one meter, and that takes care of the irrigation and everything outside. Okay. So this year, so this year we're going to put in a second meter. Because that was my that, question. So they're banging you. They're banging you for irrigation. Right. So we filed an abatement and okay. said you're banging because us just for off irrigation. the top of my head, you'd be using a whole load of water in the school. Right. If that's just for the so they're going to put a second meter and that goes out to the fields for irrigation and stuff like that. So we we'll only be paying the sewer bill on what's being used in the school. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> How much water did you use? Huh? How much water did you use? Well, the sewer is going to fall apart in here. Oh yeah. I mean, that's, that's yeah. I mean that that and they charge won't. there is probably going to go up dramatically. Just use, just use the winter usage of water. You're not irrigating in the winter, so whatever your water goes in the winter, use that for sewer. Yeah, that doesn't work that way. Okay. All right. All righty. Thanks. So the total salary related increases are $168,055, and that's mostly the steps at $56,956. The two and a half percent increase was 106,650. Uh, new longevity uh, is 10,005. Uh, an allowance for uh, increase for our non-union salaries is 16,135. The change of uh, ch uh, funding to teachers and school choice added 65,622. Coaching stipends increased 3,156. Uh, it says increase for mentor stipends, and it's just that we've always had the mentor stipends. We just never budget, so we're adding it and putting it in the budget for three thousand five fifty. Pardon? What's a mentor? Uh, if you have a new teacher, they have to have a mentor for two years, and the person who mentors them gets a stipend. Why doesn't the hmm. well, okay? It's the, the department head do it. Yeah. Yeah. If there's two or three, that means that. That person would have to take care of two or three. Now it's like a okay. one on one mentor and stuff. So nice. I, I'm speculating. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Um, we had a decrease in our retirement buybacks of 37978 and our FY18 hire, uh, new hires saved us 56536 uh, We do have some small increases. Our gasoline expense, um, we need to increase about $400. Unemployment tax, 806. Health insurance waivers um, uh, is $1,000. So in the Frontier Teachers contract, if they don't take our insurance, we pay them $1,000. And it saves us money. Yep. Um, so that's, that's an incentive. Um, the uh, custodial supplies we need to uh, increase 2,000. Regional transportation, um, this is the fifth year of our five-year contract with Gripco, and um, the annual increase is based on the uh, consumer price index. 
which came out to be about 1.83% or $5,114. Uh, Medicare tax will go up because our wages are going up. Uh, central office expense going up 15391 The sewer, you know. Um, the student technology devices, we are adding 25000 and this is to maintain them because the Chromebooks uh, that we're using, they they don't take updates. Like we have to replace them like every one or two years. They don't last as long as a laptop. So this is to keep our one our device one to one uh, one to one device program at the high school rolling and replay, kind of constantly replacing. Um, our Franklin County retirement assessment went up forty five thousand. I'm sure yours did too. And the answer that we're getting from Mr. Kowacki is just that people are living longer. Therefore. Which is not a bad thing. No. Not a bad thing. On the whole, good news. And our health insurance will increase 109364 That's just for the, our employees. Uh, that's not for central office. Um, we have a decrease in life insurance. We have a small decrease in copier costs. Uh, monitor stipends that uh, for a student that we were monitoring on a bus. Uh, technology costs down 3481 and that's just because of the way that we're allocating some of the software costs. Uh, our other insurances are down 11037 and that's mainly in our workers' comp, which um, is on a basis of a four-year average of utilization, and our two years are finally gone that we had high utilization, so we're in our low utilization years. Um, Professional services, 11555 This was something I think that we had to pay um, when we had bonded. Uh, we had to pay a fee uh, every year to uh, a bank that was, uh, that was handling our bond. And then when we paid off the bond, no one noticed. So when we're looking at the trends, it's like, how come we're over in this account every year? So we we're going to adjust that account. Our summer services um, are going to go down 15688 and our spent tuitions will go down 23590 for a total net change of 331509 So um, the total budget would be 11, 000, $11, 000, 48, um The next few pages summarize that in detail. Um, it gives you a look at what we actually spent in 17, what the 18 budget is, and what we're proposing for 19. Um, then starting on page 25, we're looking at all our other funding sources. And uh, school choice, circuit breaker, that revolving, Title I. And then that is uh, summarized on page 36 is the total. Um, but um, you make a good point. Um, we should add the athletic revolving account on here, and we should also add our building rental account so that everyone sees those funds as well, because we do use those funds. And I never thought of adding those on there, but we should. Um, so 93.99% of the budget will come from the towns. 1.95% will come from school choice. 1.82 the circuit breaker. Well, you've heard the sped revolving. Yep. 102. 0.86 from the SPED grant and 0.36. Um, page 37, this is our school choice and charter. In FY17, they projected that we would be upside down, that we would have more choice and charter out than we would take in. And so we had to budget $67,000, which would be the shortfall. That didn't come to fruition. And in fact, we got $466,843 in revenue, which we never spent in 17 because we didn't think we were going to have it. So we have it for 18. Um, but now, if you look over to the right, there again, in 19, they're saying we're going to be upside down, mm -hmm. that we're going to have $1.3 million out and only $1.2 million in. So uh, what we did was we moved some of the salaries back off of this so that we can make sure that it covers the salaries and that $35,000 shortfall. I'm hoping it won't happen. It didn't happen in 17. I'm hopeful that it's not going to happen this year. Um, Can you understand why it happened last year? Why, why was our prediction so wrong? It, it, it's the, because they're looking at the numbers in December. Oh. And, and, it's, and, and then by the time we get to June, it's, it's a totally different story. 
Yeah. You know, kids think they want to go to a charter school, they think they want a choice out, and then they end up coming back. Okay. I just want to bring up to everybody there that, that line that says charter school tuition FY 2019, mm -hmm. it's seven digits now. Mm -hmm. Just a lot yeah. of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. So every time somebody says they want to add ch more charter time over here and put a new school up there and stuff, just remember yeah. oh, no. how we voted last year. Yeah. Yep. The We're not Boston where Boston can have as many charter schools they want. Out here, we start losing more kids. We'll be combining Mohawk and Pioneer, which are, I think they're trying to share a superintendent now or something like that. No, I'm not sure how they're going to do that, but. Mm -hmm. Don't get me started, Bob. Okay. Uh, page 38 is the circuit breaker. Um, and as you can see, the revenue, um, I, as I said before, the legislature keeps funding this lower and lower, and our need for it is lower and lower because we are maintaining our kids uh, in our programs and not sending them out. Um, but the problem is we still need these positions to fund these programs because these we've got three specialized programs. We have no children pre-K to six and out of district placements. They are all taken care of in within Union 38. So they may be Waitley kids that are going to a program at, in Sunderland, or they could be a Sunderland kid going to the specialized program in Conway, but nobody's out of district at a private 7766. So we have to build the capacity at Frontier to keep those kids here. Um, so we need to find funding sources. So this is super, as, as we lose circuit breaker money, our budget is gonna continue to rise because we need to fund these salaries. Um, page 39, our excess and deficiency was certified on January 8th at $352,567. Um, the proposed usage, we had our, during our audit, um, we, it, this has been an issue that I've been trying to get um, our old auditor to look at and um, our new auditor is finally in agreement with me that there is a correction, an accounting correction that needs to be made regarding the withholding of our insurances. And we think it's gonna cost about $60,000. Um, and we're probably gonna be able to identify it in April or May um, when the auditors come back and do some field work. So we're gonna uh, um, just use uh, E&D money to make that correction. Uh, and then the school committee voted to uh, use half of the remainder to the assessments um, as they did last year, which was $146,284. On page 40, this is our school choice receiving. Um, the difference uh, between the, where we were in uh, June and where we are in December of this year. So we're actually down three kids. But as you can see in the right-hand column, most of our kids at, at Frontier are coming from Greenfield. 66 of them yep. are coming from Greenfield. And again, 30 of them are coming from the Gil Montague um, re, uh, School District. Yep. And page 41 is just what grades they're in. And let me just explain to you my wacky math on this because people go, what are you doing? What I do on this is I compare the 17th the 7th graders to the 18 8th graders to see how many we retained. Oh. Okay. So it's diagonal math. So, so, see it right so third, we had 30 in 17 and we've got 30 in 18. We didn't lose any. In 8th eighth, eighth graders we had 28. Now we only have 23. We lost 5. So I'm, I'm looking at how much we're uh, maintaining per grade level. Yep. Why um, aren't the I'm sorry. Why are there only 30 seventh graders? That can't be what it means. School choice. School choice. School choice. School choice. School choice. And then now page 42 and 43 are, is the school choice sending districts. And um, this we were down in actually one. And you can see here, mostly they're going to Hatfield and they're going to Northampton. Mm -hmm. Hatfield. I mean, Hatfield, I can see the proximity. Yeah. It, uh, for small some of our in smaller, smaller classes, but I uh, Northampton, I don't know if it's a, 
Uh, teams. Maybe it's, it can't be sports. Our sports teams are pretty good. I don't know. So you don't have to win in any championships. <laughs> Um, and then the pages, uh, page 44 is the charter out, and we have 46, we've got 52 this year, so we're up six. And they're going to Four Rivers, they're going to PBPA, and they're going to the Chinese Immersion School. So this is the page that's most concerning. Um, and, and, and like what you were saying before, we, we need to be aware, and what really kills me with the charter is the, the Four Rivers. They're doing nothing different than what we're doing. Yeah. They don't have a special charter. I can understand if you want your, your child to learn a language, you can't send them to the Chinese yeah. school. I get that. Right, if they want to play an instrument, go to Pioneer Valley. If, right, if they want to be an artist, go there. But Four Rivers, Hilltown, they're doing the same thing we're doing, college preparatory. <clears throat> I just, I would have to say that probably doing the same thing on paper. But I would have to believe that when you get in the school on a day-to-day -day basis, there's something different that's going on in that school that 28 children do not want to be a part of, whether it's a social atmosphere, whatever it might be. It's not on paper. So it has to be somewhere else. Could be convenience, a few of them convenience. But, but I have generally to tell you, it's being in that building and having uh, having been in, in Hoyle, having been in Iowa, mm -hmm. and now being here, I have never seen such happy kids in the hallway. I mean when you when you're in the school, these kids are happy kids. They're and they're and they're and they're very well behaved and they listen to you. I mean they I mean we, when the sixth graders first come to seventh grade, it, it, it's horrific because they're going to lunch and they're all crazy. But right. when you go out and you say, walk, don't run, shh, you need to take it down. They're respectful. It, it, so I, 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 don't, I don't feel that culture, like you're saying, I, I think the culture there is amazing. I'm, I'm, uh, it, I've got kids that come in my office every day and say, hi, Ms. Kavanaugh, how are you today? Yeah. No, I think what Paul's saying is there's got to be something. That what you're saying, Patty, maybe. I, I think it's the parents that are well, missing. I, that's what I was going to say. I think it has a lot to do with the parents. It's the parents that are missing. What's the that perception that they have? Perception perception that they do we do have, exit yeah. interviews? Uh, no, no. no, because we they're, they're, they're not, we never get them. But, we, but when they decide to leave, I don't care where they're going, we should find out why they made, why they made that decision to leave before they exit. Because you know oftentimes before they leave the school. So two this is the second year that Mr. Modesto, not only does he do sixth grade nights, he does sixth grade days where he invites the parents to come in during the school day. He, has, he does co a coffee hours so that parents can go in during the day so parents can see the schools, to see the classes in action, see that, the, that we do have small class sizes, see what the atmosphere in the building is. And, and I think that has been successful in us retaining more. But I have to tell you that the, the school culture at Frontier, it just blows me away. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, if you lose an employee, you do an exit interview. You find out why they're leaving. Right. What, what made you decide that this wasn't the right environment for you? Because it is a very personal decision, obviously. Right. And, I, and I just think, and, and maybe we'd find that the parents just did, didn't have their eyes open or whatever it is. But until we start asking those questions, we know there's no way we can compete against it. Right. Because we're, we're, we're sick, and it's sort of like a, 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 a school gets 50% of its alum giving money. Well, that doesn't mean the other 50% want to give money. You've got to right. find out why somebody doesn't like something as opposed to just knowing and just talking to people what to do. And that, again, it's the age of school competition. Find out what they're doing and beat them at their game. Right. Well, there are, there are neighbors. I mean, somebody, well, some of these kids must live around one of us. You know, it's our neighbors that we know. If we do, that's another way to, you know, well, the find out. Can ask. The, you know, oh, the school yeah, can yeah. ask, and they should. But, but which school? So if we don't get, so if we don't get the seventh grade, they well, never come to us from right. sixth grade. For, we don't for know example, who they are. If, if somebody goes, does not, is, is it Whaley Elementary School in sixth grade? Well, it has to be a huge perception. So Whaley should kind of figure. Like, it. So Whaley yeah. needs to ask why aren't you? So that's my point. I, I get right. that. I absolutely understand. Yeah. It has to be huge in Conway because they're. Lynn said everybody in sixth grade is going to the charter well, school. Well, we can look at that. There has to be a if, cultural Let's look at there. the next page, 45 and 54, because what I do on this page is I break it down by town. 
So if you look, Conway has seven kids that go out, out on choice, and they have 14 that go out on charter. So they have a total of 21. Deerfield has 12 out on choice, 24 out on charter, 36. Thunderland, 13 out on choice, 8 out on charter, 21 total. Waitley, 10 out on choice, 6 out on charter, for a total of 60. So Deerfield. Patty, what's driving the variability in the cost per student choicing out? For example, if, if I just glance at the page, it looks like in general 5,000 students. But if you look at two, look at Northampton, two students in Waitley choicing in Northampton, it's 68, almost 69,000. Because it's, one of them must be getting SPED services. So and when they get, so if you're school choice, and this, if we get this too, if we provide school choice, uh, if we provide SPED services for a school choice child, we report that in every June, and you get a SPED increment. You get the 5,000 plus the SPED increment. That, that the sending town has to send you the SPED increment, which includes transportation costs as well. Thank you. So, uh, so if you look on the right, um, this is this is what's going out um, in total: one million two hundred eighty-six thousand three hundred thirty-nine dollars. Once they get to Frontier, we lose so many who are seventh grade, who leave in eighth grade, or is it mostly as they enter? Or either seventh or ninth? I don't have an answer to that, but I, I, I Mr. Modesto would be, be able to tell us that. I, I personally had China, if you were China for a day, yeah. um, I, I have to guess, when you look at these numbers, sixth grade kids, I would have to imagine that there are teachers encouraging them to go to charter school, to go to school of choice, to move away from Frontier. I would, I would, I would, I would like to guess, that, that would surprise me. I would find that, that, that surprise me. That would surprise me. I mean, as someone who had a sixth grader a couple years ago, I, I don't think it ever came anywhere. Why would you say that it's happening? The 21st century, that's why. <laughs> because these are pretty significant numbers for small towns. And, and you know, I think teachers have a great impact on children, especially in the sixth grade. Now, I don't know if um, you ever, ever taught. I, think that's I taught middle school, and I know how those kids cling and, you know, like. I, would, I would just go, some of it is, uh, I want to say, like networking, like. You know, uh, in the sixth grade, you're playing soccer and this and that, and you get to be friends with somebody that's playing in Hatfield, or you're on the team with Hatfield yeah. kids or whatever. Oh, you know, you want to come to our school, and you know, so okay. I mean, I don't think the the teachers are are helping to push them out the door. I think it's more social. And I think it's a it, it, again, if we look at the if we look at the demographics of these four towns compared to where I come from. You've got educated parents who are middle class and above making educational decisions for their children. True. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they know the, the, how to choice out. They know how to charter out. Which is the argument I gave you earlier, Patty, and you came back and said convenience. But but and some of it's it could be convenience. some of it could be convenient but some of it could be convenience. At, at the at the at the little so, at the little guy level, I yeah. think it's convenient because when I if I'm working in you know Waitley, let's say I work I live in I live in Springfield, but I'm working at, at Yankee Candle. I want my kid at Waitley because if he gets sick, I'm right here. Right, yeah, right. Okay, so sure. I'm going to bring my kid from Springfield to Waitley. But as the kids get older, you, not you, so you, it's not so much of a concern as a, for a parent anymore. Mm -hmm. You sort of like let like let that go. Like oh yeah, they're going to be fine till I get there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do think an, an interesting stat would be to know what, what grades they went to these different schools. Because you, you don't have that data here. So to know the, the, the 11 students who went to Hatfield, at what grades did they, did they leave after six? Did they leave after yeah. seventh, eighth, ninth? At, at what point are they leaving? When, if we look back at your school, if, if we look back at Waitley, 
they were probably, they probably always were in Hatfield because most of your most of your school choice out are in Hatfield. Right, but again, so, that's that's good data rather than projecting. But John, yeah, John, this is you know that's a that, that's a school committee. That's a that's a, a school administrators deal. Sure. If you want to go to their meetings and you want to talk about that, I'm just asking. Just I know, but we've been here a long time. Okay, but yeah, so we can talk you about you brought up other issues. You know, so I'm not so much about okay, talking about how we're going to tell the school committee how to do their job. Okay. It, it's good data to have, but it's it's hard data to get. And 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 who and who do you assign it to? Do we get an admissions counselor? Do we get a recruiter? And I hear what you're saying about being competitive, but do we really want to pay a person to just marketer? Be a marketer. Yeah. 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 Um, that's well. You can under you 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 feel the um, you know the concern is palpable in the room mm -hmm. regarding these issues. And we heard it last night in Sunderland as well. And we just don't deal with dollars and cents here. Mm -hmm. Because if we could just look at the right hand column and go yes and no. It's about the value that it's bringing into the town based on the money that we spend. So we get you. Okay. Now the next section we enter into is the assessment. So page 47 is the um, assessment page where we drop out 2012 and we bring in the year 2007 for the five-year enrollment and Waitley dropped out 63 kids and brought in 48. So your assessment is actually gonna go down from 11.84 to 11.44 for FY19. Uh, page 48, we're looking at the uh, differences in our revenue. So the assessments to the town are going to increase $349,615. Our chapter 70, as I told you before, $11,100. It was $20 per student. Excess and deficiency is actually going to be $10,766 lower. Our regional transportation, we're hoping we'll go up to 30, 000, um, 30, increase $30,691. And the credit you were getting from the revolving transportation fund, there is none for 19 because we actually didn't get as much in 17 as we had budgeted. Um, and then your minimum contributions are down below, uh, set by the state, and you can see Waitley's has gone down $4,962. Page 49 is the page that comes exactly from the state. Uh, I would just draw that in there. Um, and you can see from um, fiscal year 18th and 19th, Whitley has uh, had a, negative, a change of negative two students uh, at this level. Page 50 of 54 is um, the total assessment to Whitley. So if you look at um, the combined assessment number, you are going to be paying $4,549 less than you were last year. Um, the operating budget assessment is 915, 939, and the, tra I, I'm sorry, 907,679, and the transportation assessment is 16,555. Uh, page 51 is how we do the assessment. So we take our, our budget, our operating budget, less the uh, regional transportation. We subtract the Chapter 78, we subtract the free cash allocation, and we come up with the 7,786. We then take your minimum contributions as set by the state, and then the balance is assessed by the five-year enrollment um, with Waitley being 11.44. Okay. Uh, page 52 is um, a wide, uh, the regional uh, transportation assessment. Um, the regional transportation for the cherry sheet says we're gonna get 156,818. I don't believe them because if I look at our end of the year report, what was eligible for reimbursement was 230614 They keep playing with that number, so I'm going to conservatively base it that we're going to get 60% of that. So I say we're only going to get 138368 So you're getting assessed 144708 But the good news is if I'm wrong and we get more money, that money no longer flows into the excess and deficiency, it comes right back to you in the um, revolving transportation fund and you will get a credit in the following year. Uh, 53, page 53 is just my source in use, uh, making sure that I'm in balance uh, for the two, uh, for both years. And then page 54 is just all the allocations 
um, split out for the union and the regional, the union 38 only, and then the frontier regional assessment. Okay. Um, are there any questions regarding frontier regional lotteries or the district? Final questions? No questions? I, uh, sure. I apologize. I, I may have missed this. Um, did you go over the health insurance stipend that is offered to the frontier employees? Sure. So if you if you're a teacher and you come to us and you don't take our insurance, we pay you a thousand dollars because it saves us money not to have you on our our rolls. So we'll we'll give you a thousand dollars to go be on your spouse's insurance. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we you. had that discussion with you. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't. No, that's. that's Hey, hey, pay attention. Of course, it's kind of yes. related to the budget. Just looking through here on, on your uh, utility costs, you're showing 180000 for electricity. <coughs> is, uh, is Frontier looking at solar anywhere? Yeah, right. Is cost? Or any other for the four towns plus Frontier looking at solar? Why not? I, well, the only thing I can tell you about solar is our... I know, but it's we really, can't put it's solar it's on our budget. roof. So we can't put solar on the roof. On Frontier. On Frontier. Okay. So if you're going to take over playing fields to put solar in, unless you buy a piece of land somewhere else and divert the savings to Frontier or something. Right. You can't put it on the roof. Or you can cover the parking lots. Like yeah. You can cover the parking something, lots. Something to do with the roof. That's the only thing I can tell you. Right. That's yeah. what a lot of places do. The you MSBA mess. does not like uh, the schools putting the panels on the roof it. because it adds puncture, which adds leaks, okay. <laughs> adds weight load. Yeah, but, I mean, you got 180000 in here just Frontier Plus, what, 30, 40 for each school? I mean, that's almost half a million dollars in electricity. You spend in a year. Oh, Sutherland, Sutherland, Sutherland is solar. They, they, but they don't own it. So um, uh -huh. uh, they are, they are running it through the um, elementary school um, meter. So that's going to become um, on behalf of cost. They're going to give me that uh, number for the utilization for the school. Conway is looking to put in their own array, and they're going to own it. They're not going to have a third party. Um, but no one's talked about a frontier, or I, I've heard nothing from Deerfield or Frontier. That's a that's a school committee. Um, Great school committee, thing. get cracking on that, okay? I guess I, I, I just like to tell you what I've heard in the past. They can't put it on the roof because of the type of roof it is. Yeah, yeah. It's not a peak roof like you know yeah. where you can attach it to shingles or underneath right. shingles or whatever. How that's done it has to do with the rack so we're not going to take over playing fields no no you know parking lots are great great idea though yeah. you know, oh, we can put a second level on the parking lot we well, like up you, there. you put up the structures yeah. and then yeah. you put them uh, the canopies sure go ahead um like with all the discussion look around the table i know that some people here had children in front here the same time i did i don't know if there's anybody here who has a child in front here right now but at the time I said it, and I'll say it again, it is the best kept secret in the Pioneer Valley. It really is. I, I, I remember going to ball games with people and, and all kinds of, you know, just people are unsure about what to expect. And whenever they asked me, I, I told them that. that. That is truly my opinion. It is the best kept secret in the Pioneer Valley. Um, people, more, more people knew about it, they wouldn't be choicing out. If more people took the time to actually go and visit. Um, I did, and I knew lots of people who didn't, and they were all worried about their kids. And I'm like, well, why don't you go visit the school? And that it, it, I, I agree with Patty about just the general assessment of the, uh, the, the quality of the, the school is very high. And um, I think, you know, I, I have a son who, who did more in the arts than he ever would have been able to do at PVPA, and he can do math. And, you know? and speaking of that, we do have our play, which is the Wizard of Oz, which is coming up um, it's very shortly. I don't know the exact dates, but look on our, the website of Frontier for the dates for our performances of Wizard of Oz. This is the second year now that we're going to be doing a musical uh, with our new music director there. Um, so I mean, we, we, have, we have arts. We have arts at Frontier, and that's something a lot of other schools can't say. And uh, there's no need to go across the river to PVPA. We've got 
excellent arts and supported other schools. Our but, music teacher actually just took the marching band to each of the four elementary schools to get the kids involved to, to see what the band did and tried to get you know get them to say, hey, when you get to high school, this is what you get to do. Yeah. So it, 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 it's it's it, it, not only are we known for our sports, but it, but Joyce is right. The, the the arts program is just as amazing. And as we all know, as we all know, you can have the best mousetrap in the world, but if you don't have somebody selling it and advertising it, it just is your mousetrap. So with that said, anything else? Um, I just want to remind everyone that we have a pancake breakfast this Sunday from 8 to 11 at Waitley Elementary. It's really good. Be real syrup available. <laughs> there will be, yes. Right, I'm going. <laughs> really. And I bet you a lot, a lot of you old people up there, including myself, were, were doing that many, 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 many years ago, years ago. making pancakes. So. That's true. I think Sunderland calls still it need volunteers. I think yeah. Sunderland calls it the man cake breakfast because all the men make the breakfast, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. We're done. Thank you very much. Uh, Ryan, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to suggest that we table that for the next meeting. Oh, fine. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Table. Which is the personnel discussion. Which is 22. Thank you for staying for first year. There's no rush to do that. Motion accepted. Motion accepted. Second.